Okay, guys, um, thank you for trying this out with me. This is our first video, and um, I sort of look forward to hearing tomorrow what you guys think of it. So let's see how it goes. Um, one of the sections that we missed in, uh, let's see, chapter 3 um, had to do with finding the domain of a function. Okay, so we're going to catch up on that right now. First of all, let's review what is a function. Um, remember, we have function notation, f of x equals something. And most of what we did with this in chapter 3 was we did linear functions. So this had to be a line. f of x equals, and usually we had something like mx plus b. Linear functions. But there are other kind of functions too. I could have f of x equals x squared. If you graph that, that makes a parabola. We'll learn about those later. Or f of x equals, oh, I don't know, rad x. Something like that. So a function can be anything. Um, it's labeled as a function by using this function notation. One of the main things that we need to remember for this lesson is, what is the domain of a function? Now, in the problems we did in class, the domain was always given. It would say the domain is negative 1, 0, and 4. And you would plug those in and find out what your range was. But usually, that's actually not how it works. Usually, they don't give you the domain. You have to figure out what is the domain. OK? So what is the domain? Um, remember, we talked a little bit about this. But one thing that the domain is is it's the x values. That's one way to think about it, x values. Another way to think of it is the numbers that you plug in, aka your input. It's the numbers that you plug in for x. The way that I want us to think about domain for this chapter is I want us to ask the question, what numbers can I plug in for x that give me a valid output? That is the question that we are going to ask ourselves when we are trying to find the domain. What numbers can I plug in for x that give me a valid output? Okay, so let's see how that works in some example problems. Remember, this is the question that we're going to keep coming back to. What numbers can I plug in? In other words, what numbers work in my input that give me a valid output? Okay, so let's try some examples and see if we can answer this question for ourselves. So the instructions for all these examples is going to be give the domain of the function. Okay, so our first example, example A, will be f of x equals x squared. That was one of the ones I gave you above, actually, as an example of a function. Now we're going to ask ourselves, what is the domain of this function? What numbers can I plug in for x here that will give me a valid output? Well, let's try some numbers. What would happen if I plugged in uh, 2? f of 2 would be... 2 squared, and I would get 2 squared is 4. Well, that's pretty valid. 4 is a good number. Let's try some other numbers. What about 3? That would be 3 squared. And what do I get out now? 9. Those are both perfectly valid answers. Hmm. I've got to be a little bit more creative. Uh, what, what are some weirder numbers I could pick? How about 0? Does f of 0 exist? 0 squared, let's see, 0 times 0 is 0. Yeah, that works out fine. Another valid answer. Maybe I should try some negative numbers. f of negative 4. So f of negative 4 would be negative 4 quantity squared. That's negative 4 times negative 4. And my output will be positive 16. Another totally valid answer, another valid output. Can anyone think of? Um, numbers, kinds of numbers that I haven't plugged in that might not work. Let's see. Maybe a fraction. f of uh, 1 half. That would be 1 half squared. 1 half times 1 half is 1 fourth. That's a totally legit 
um, output that totally works. And so all of these numbers, when I plug them into f of x equals x squared, they all give me valid outputs. In fact, there's no number that you can plug in here that you've learned about anyway. Um, we'll learn about some at the end of the year. But there's no number that you've learned about so far that when you plug it in, you get any kind of impossible answer. And so really, the domain of this function, x squared, is all real numbers. And here's how we write that. We use our set notation bracket, and we say all real numbers. I'm lazy, so I just wrote the numbers on. You can also write it this way. That symbol, that R with a double line, means all real numbers. So these are both perfectly fine um, for stating the domain of f of x equals x squared. In other words, when I answer the question, what numbers can I plug in for x here that give me a valid output, the answer is I can plug in any number I want. Okay, let's try another example. So the instructions are the same. Give the domain of the function. And for example, b, let's try f of x equals 1 over x. Once again, maybe I'll just start by sort of thinking about, well, what numbers could I plug in? What if I plug in 2 again? f of 2 would be 1 over 2. 1 half, that's a perfectly legitimate, perfectly valid output, so that works fine. Let's try 0, or let's try a negative number, f of negative 4. If I plug in negative 4, I get 1 over negative 4. That's just negative 1 fourth. No, excuse me, negative 1 fourth. So that's another perfectly valid output. Looks like I can plug in positive numbers and negative numbers. And now let's try, um, uh, as I said in a, a second ago, let's try f of 0. If I plug in 0 here, I get 1 over 0. Does anyone know what 1 over 0 is? No. 1 over 0 does not exist. It is undefined. You can't do anything divided by 0. And it just so happens with this function that I can plug in any number I can think of, positive numbers, negative numbers, I could plug in fractions, I could plug in rational numbers, irrational numbers, any number I want except for 0. So how do I write my answer? I write that the domain is, and here I'm going to use set notation, x such that x is any number except for 0. So this is saying that the domain is x such that x does not equal 0. This is sort of just a fancy notation for that. Your domain is always going to start with x colon, and then you just need to write this part. x does not equal 0 in this case. And what this means is that when I ask myself the question, what numbers can I plug in for x that give me a valid output? The answer to that question for this function is I can plug in any number I want except for 0. So x does not equal 0, and that's my answer. That's a domain. Let's try another one. Uh, let's do g of x equals um, square root of x plus 2. Now here we're going to try to be a little bit more clever. Up here, instead of just picking random numbers, I might have said, gosh, I know something about fractions already. I know that fractions cannot have 0 on the denominator. And I could have thought, but they can have anything else on the denominator. So my answer is all real numbers except for 0. x cannot equal 0. For radicals, what is it that we are not allowed to have inside the radical? Well, we're allowed to have positive numbers, because I can take the square root of, for example, 4, and we're allowed to have even 0. I can take the square root of 0. g of negative 2 would give me the square root of negative 2 plus 2, which happens to be the square root of 0. And that actually works. Square root of 0 is 0. So that's a valid output. But I'm not allowed to have... 0 inside the radical. I'm sorry, I'm not allowed to have negative numbers inside the radical. Positive numbers and 0 are OK. But whatever's inside the radical, in this case x plus 2, I know that it is not allowed to be negative, so it has to be greater than or equal to 0. That would be, in other words, all the positive numbers and 0. So to find my domain, I just solve this inequality. Subtract 2 from both sides, and I get x is greater than or equal to negative 2, and that is my domain. In other words, I can plug in any number greater than negative 2, like 7. g of 7 is rad 7 plus 2, which is rad 9, which is 3. I can plug in even um, negative 2 itself, 
I get zero. But if I plug in a number that's less than negative two, that is not in my domain, and that won't work. So if I plug in, for example, negative three, I get square root of negative three plus two, which is the square root of negative one, and that will not work. The square root of negative one does not exist. There is no square root of negative one. So my domain is x is greater than or equal to negative two. I need to write that answer using set notation x such that. How do I describe all of the numbers that work? They're all of the numbers that are greater than or equal to negative 2. And that is my answer. So for part b, all of the numbers were, that worked were all of the numbers except for x equals 0. And for part c, all of the numbers that work are all of the numbers greater than or equal to negative 2. And what we've seen here is that there are basically two things to look out for. when finding the domain. The first thing is fractions, as we saw in part B. If I have a fraction, I know that the denominator cannot equal 0. And I'll set up that equation with the denominator on the left a cannot equal sign and zero, and I'll solve it, and that will be my domain. The other thing I need to look out for are radicals, square roots. Because I know for radicals, whatever is inside the radical has to be greater than or equal to zero. Just like on part um, C, what was inside the radical was x plus two. I said that had to be greater than or equal to zero, and I solved, and that was my domain. If there's no fraction in your problem and there's no radical in your problem, as with part A, f of x equals x squared, there's no radical, there's no fraction, and so the answer is all real numbers. Those ones are easy. But if there's a radical or a fraction, you need to either, you need to do one of these two things. So let's just do one more example of each and then we'll be done. So let's do, um, let's see, number 30 from the homework that I'm about to assign. And this is example D. And um, for number 30, the instructions are still find the domain. And the function is f of x equals 2 over x plus 3. So first of all, I ask myself, well, do I have one of these two things to look out for? Are there any fractions in this problem or any radicals? Well, yeah, there's a fraction, 2 over x plus 3. So what do I do when there's a fraction? I know that the denominator has to be set not equal to 0, and I'll solve. So here the denominator is x plus 3. To find the domain, I say x plus 3 cannot equal 0, and I'll solve. Subtract 3 from both sides, I get x cannot equal negative 3, because that is the one number that if I plug it into f of x, f of negative 3, I will get 2 over negative 3 plus 3. That's 2 over 0, and that does not exist. So as long as x doesn't equal negative 3, I have a valid output. And so my domain is x such that x does not equal negative 3. Let's do one more example, then we'll be done. This is number 34 from the homework. And it's example e. The instructions are still to find the domain. Here our function is a bit more complicated. 2 over x minus 1 times x plus 2. Once again, I look out for these two things. Is there a fraction or is there a radical? If there's a radical, I'm going to take whatever's inside the radical, like I did here, x plus 2, and I'm going to say it has to be greater than or equal to 0, and I'm going to solve, just like in example C. If there's a fraction, I'm going to take the denominator and say it cannot equal 0, and I'll solve. Here there's a fraction. The denominator is x minus 1 times x plus 2, so I know that x minus 1 times x plus 2 cannot equal 0. What are the two numbers that if I were to plug them in for x here would give me 0? Well, I can find that out by setting each factor equal to 0 separately, or not equal to 0 in this case, and solving. Add 1 to both sides, I get that x cannot equal 1, and subtracting 2 from both sides on this one, I get that x cannot equal negative 2. If x equals 1, or x equals negative 2, and I plug that into f of x, I am not going to get a valid output, because I'll get 2 over 0, which is not allowed. 
If x equals any number besides these, I will get a valid output. And so my domain is x such that x does not equal, sorry, x such that x does not equal negative 2 or 1. And that is my answer. Okay? So your homework for tonight is page 145. I want you to do number 29, and I want you to do 31, 32, and 33. Only four problems, okay? Obviously, the even number will not be in the back of the book. Do your best. Um, this is due tomorrow, which, let's see, will be Friday. And I'll see you then. Thanks, guys. Bye.